I'm consistently receiving people asking me for some random niche setting that I have and whatever it's set to. So to clear that up, I chose to make this settings video. In this video, I'll be going over Windows settings, you know, miscellaneous stuff like monitor or whatever, obviously in-game settings, and maybe some random stuff at the end. To start, arguably one of the most important settings is turning off enhanced pointer precision. To do this, just look up mouse settings, and then go to here, and then go to additional mouse options, click pointer options, and then turn off enhanced pointer precision. Also, you can change your pointer speed to the same as mine, but this won't really matter as you'll see later in the video. Next, we're going to turn our power plan up to the most performant option. To do this, you're going to search and look for power, and then click power and sleep settings. And then you want to click additional power settings. And then here you'll see a bunch of options. You want to choose the one with the most performance. So in my case, this is ultimate performance, but for most of you, you'll probably only see something like high performance. Whichever one is the highest, just click that. Now we want to change our Xbox game settings. Now, these aren't only applying to Xbox, but I'm pretty sure it's a part of like the whole Xbox integration of Windows. So you want to look up game and then go to game bar settings. Make sure this is off, make sure this isn't checked, and you can change this stuff when you want to play on a controller or whatever, but to be honest, I've never really found a use for it. Then go to captures, it'll take a second. And then you want to make sure all of this is just turned off. And then you want to go to game mode and it is very important that you set this to like on. Now this one's a little bit more tricky and to be honest I don't think it helps that much but it's just something I always do just to be sure. Now this one isn't super important and I don't really notice that much of a difference but it's something I always do but this one is completely optional as are all of these. With this step we'll be turning off energy efficient ethernet. To start for this, you want to look up Network, and then you want to go to Ethernet Settings. And then you want to go to Change Adapter Options, right click Ethernet, go to Properties, and then you want to click Configure. Then click Advanced, and then go to Energy Efficient Ethernet, and make sure this is disabled, and also make sure EEE or Advanced EEE is off or disabled. Click OK and then close out of all of that. It should apply. This is also a very important step that I highly suggest you just double check is set. You want to make sure your monitor hertz is set to the highest value it can be. In my case, I have a 244 hertz BenQ monitor, so you just want to look up display and then click duplicate or extend like the first result. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should see advanced display settings. Click this. And then you should see refresh rate and you can just change it to the bottom value which in my case is 239. Next we're going to be changing some NVIDIA specific settings but if you have an AMD GPU I'm 90% sure you have almost all these settings just named slightly different in your control panel. But to get to the NVIDIA control panel you want to right click your desktop go to NVIDIA control panel and just wait for it to open. Then it adjusts image settings with preview I have this set to use the advanced 3D image settings. However, if you really want performance and you don't care how your game looks at all, because I do content, I've always had mine set to quality up here, but you can click this setting and drag it all the way down to performance and click apply. You'll get more frames, but your game might not look as nice and like some of the edges might be a bit more jagged. If you go to manage 3D settings, I pretty much have all of mine on default, except max frame rate I always have off, and in low latency mode I have on. I'm sure there's some random minuscule settings that you might have that I don't, but for the most part I just always leave this stuff default. Now we're going to do adjust desktop color settings. If you don't want to touch your monitor settings at all, and you simply just want to change digital vibrance inside of your computer. Just go to Digital Vibrance and slide this to 80. That's the value that I use on like all of my monitors, unless I'm changing something specifically inside of the monitor. In my case, mine's 65 because later in the video you'll see my monitor settings and I have the Vibrance set to 10. But yeah, that's all for NVIDIA stuff. In previous videos, people have asked me how do I get the cross in the middle of my screen instead of a cursor, and today I'll show you. So you want to go in the bottom left and go to Mouse Settings. And then like we did before, you want to go to additional mouse options and click pointers this time. 
then on normal select, you want to go to browse. You want to scroll until you get the cross. Now you can use L or M. I use M and that's because it's just medium length and L is long length. Regardless, this is purely optional and I think for Siege it's kind of useless, but on games like Rust it's kind of nice if you want to crosshair whenever you get cursor bug. Now this is a more of a kind of important step. You want to look up graphic settings and then you want to make sure reduce latency and improve performance is enabled. You'll have to restart your PC after turning this on, but I definitely think it's worth it. And then you're going to want to click browse and then find your Rainbow Six EXE, which is wherever you installed the game. And you can quickly find that through Ubisoft, but I think you can figure that out. What you want to do though, is you want to, once you add it to this list, you want to click options and then make sure it's on high performance. Make sure that it is not on power saving. Even if you're on a laptop or whatever you're using, make sure this is on high performance or you'll see like your temps on like your GPU and CPU and like your usage spiking up and down. And that's not very good. Now we're going to be talking about RAM. Now, RAM seating. <coughs> now I'm going to say this, I used to not think RAM seating was very important, but let me tell you, I gained like 80 to 90 frames when I seated my RAM properly the first time. Now, this might seem super tedious, but it really makes sense when you look into it. But all you need to know is your RAM shouldn't sit right next to each other, and there's specific slots that your RAM should be sitting in if, for instance, you only have two of four slots. Now, if you have four RAM slots and you have four sticks of RAM, this is completely fine if you just put them in whatever slot, as long as you only have four slots. However, like most people, and like me, I have two sticks of RAM and I have four slots. So, what you want to do Basically, you only like occupy this like a specific number. The majority of the time, at least on my like motherboard, I'm pretty sure it's B1 and B2. But on yours, it might be different. You might just have to read the instructions. Another thing to note is in your BIOS, this I can't make a whole video on because I honestly doing it for every single BIOS would be literally impossible. But Google your BIOS and look up XMP. Most of you will have a gaming motherboards. This will be super documented and all you got to look up is just how to enable XMP on your motherboard. All this does is it safely overclocks your RAM and gets you the performance you paid for. Next is monitor settings. Now every single monitor is different but I have a BenQ240 and this is what I have my settings set to. I have the mode set to FPS1, brightness set to 50, black EQ or black equalization set to 0, and then color vibrance set to 10. Those are the only settings I changed. I didn't go into like advanced and change anything. And my monitor looks beautiful and I'm happy with it. Finally, one last really niche thing, but something not a lot of people do, is whenever you play, if you really care about frames and you have something called Wallpaper Engine, which is what's making my background animated, you want to go to Wallpaper Engine and just simply right click it and just pause whenever you're playing. And as you'll see, it'll freeze your background and it might not be super pleasant on the eyes, but this thing draws like power whenever you're playing, especially if you're playing and like have two monitors like while it's on the other monitor this uses a decent amount of GPU, just enough to like make a difference. Now that we're at the siege part of the video, a really easy way to get some extra frames is going to your siege installation, going to where it's installed, and then go to cache, and then go inside of avatars and just delete everything in this folder. What this does is every single time you load into a game, it downloads all five people's profile picture like six times. Whenever you clear this, all it'll do is just re-download the profile pictures that don't exist there. Now moving on the Siege. I'm on my alt account right now, but my settings are always the same across both accounts. You want to go into overlay and then click settings here and then make sure display FPS counter and game is enabled. Now. This is personal preference, but I always have enable in-game push notifications disabled, so it doesn't take up like a quarter of the screen and get you killed sometimes. Really random and probably not likely, but still, I always have this disabled. Next you're going to want to go to settings, options, and I have ping on, display performance metrics off, connectivity feedback default, stun VFX white glare, cycle inside camera groups off, diffuser pickup on both, visible throw trajectory on, Drone after prep automatic, 
most of you will probably have the same setting as me, but if you play comp, you might want to have manual. I honestly really never cared and always had mine on automatic. Match replay, if you want to save some extra FPS, you can turn this off, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. And if you want to get cheaters banned with clips, I would probably keep this on. And all this doesn't matter. HUD, I literally always have just set to default. And that's it. Audio, I have both of these set to English, subtitle off, but sometimes I'll have it on, it's just sometimes it's abstracting. Dynamic range, this is really important. If you have it on hi-fi, gunshot sounds will be like normal. And if you have it on night mode, all that happens is it lowers the sound of gunshots and slightly raises the sound of footsteps. So if you'll watch my videos, you might be like, you know, if you're on hi-fi, you might be like, man, it's really easy to hear people in these videos. It's probably because of that. But yeah, I highly recommend playing on night mode. I think anything else is just nerfing yourself. Master volume, I play 100, in-game SFX 100, in-game music 0, menu SFX 100, menu music volume 0, voiceover 0, voiceover presets maximum. Well, I guess this doesn't matter because, you know, voiceover is uh, like 0. This doesn't matter either. I always have this on stereo. If you have it on mono, you will never, ever, ever be able to hear like if someone's to your left or right. This is really bad to have on mono. I don't even know why this exists. Um, mute on unfocused. This basically just makes it whenever you tab out of the game, it mutes. Voice chat volume. I don't know why this is so high. I don't really have this lower. Push to talk and 100. No, this really matters. This is personal preference. Display. I play 1920, 1080, 240 hertz. Aspect ratio, 3-2. V-Sync off, FPS limit off, widescreen letterbox off, FOV 90. Now, I will never change my menu display area, but sometimes I'll play with like, you know, 85 HUD display area. But recently I've been playing with 100. Also, actually, we'll go back. I constantly play different aspect ratios, like 4, 3, 16, 10. Like this literally is, I'll switch these every other day. Next is quality. Now, my settings are set to low right now just because I was doing some benchmarking earlier, but this is what I, I'll show you the settings I play on. I play texture quality high. I'll play texture filtering linear. LOD quality on ultra because it makes it easier to see like the glow or shine on people when they're outside or whatever. Shading quality low. Shadow quality, always have this on medium. If you have shadow quality on low, you won't be able to see the uh, shadows of people, for instance, on Clubhouse, whenever they're walking past garage door, you won't be able to see their shadow if you have it on low, but if you have it on medium, you will. Reflection quality low, VFX quality low, everything else low, zoom and depth of field, definitely keep this off. It makes like things on your scope blurry. And anti-aliasing, you want to also have off. At least if you want to copy my settings. Some people like this better on, but I think it just makes things look blurry. Now, drone speed boost, I have this on hold. Raw input, I have on. Now, this basically will make you not have... All raw input will do is if you change your Windows settings mouse speed, this will basically override that and get your input straight from your mouse. There's been bugs with this in the past, but they've been pretty good with it for the past few years, so I always just leave mine on. I play default multiplier and my mouse sensitivity horizontal and vertical are both 11. Now these are my ADS values and this is like current. I play 39, 62 and then 71, 78, 92. I frequently will change my 1x to like 42 and I'll frequently change my like 2.5 to like 65 or 59. Now keybinds, I play default with push to talk on N. <laughs> These are my controller settings if you want them, they're not very good. Um, and I play optic color light blue, opacity 100, but like, you know, some other settings, I'm constantly changing this. But yeah, that's about everything. The last thing I'll say before I end the video is nobody's settings is going to make you the best player in the world. Nobody's settings are going to give you no recoil. Nobody's settings will do anything for you. It's all personal preference. All I hope to do with this video is help people find their settings just a little bit easier. I think directly copying my personal in-game settings is stupid. 
I think trying them out for a little and seeing how you like them and seeing what you like and don't like and changing it, I think that's great. But for the most part, nobody's settings is going to give you no recoil. Nobody's settings is going to teach you how to hold an angle or teach you when to peek and when not to peek. Nobody's settings is going to build you muscle memory to flick consistently. The only thing they'll do everything I just mentioned is practice. Practice with the same and right settings for a long time and you'll be as good as anyone you see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I love all of y'all, and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.